Hello guys, how are you doing? Um, you are done with first exam. Now we are, I'm gonna go over the material for second exam. This is a short chapter. It should take us, I don't know, uh, half an hour or so uh, to finish it up. Uh, I hope uh, so, we'll see. Uh, this chapter is broken down to two parts. The first part talks about ATP which you already know, you studied it for the material for exam number one. And uh, so you were on top of it. Uh, and the second half of this exam, uh, or, uh, yeah, or the second half of this chapter is over enzymes. And enzymes, uh, you know, you can take an enzymology class in a big university the whole entire semester they talk about the enzymes. And here I am talking about for what, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, of course, you should know this for the rest of your career in biological field. Uh, you should know what enzymes are, the differences between enzymes. As you take more classes, hopefully, uh, the differences between enzymes and hormones or enzymes and other things will come up. Uh, so you should know um, the enzymes very well as well. We will talk about that. So uh, this chapter talks about, well, we are beginning, uh, already, you already know what metabolism is. Already talked about it. Metabolism, it is catabolism and anabolism. Catabolism, it means uh, breaking down of molecules, okay? Break down of molecules. And anabolism is building up of molecules. So that's what a metabolism means. It means when the, uh, in your body, in the cell, any cell, uh, amoeba cells, when molecules break down, and then when molecules are being building, uh, built up, it is called metabolism. Then you have the definition of bioenergetic is a study of how energy flows through living organisms. And that has, oh my, it has, uh, you know, when physicists, biologists come together, mechanical engineers, oh, it's a fascinating area. Uh, I don't know, I try to grasp as much as I can about bioenergetics, but it's an interesting field uh, for whoever likes to study life biology and likes to study engineering physics type of stuff. Okay, what is the metabolic pathway? Metabolic pathway, when you have a compound, uh, some molecule, molecule A becomes molecule B, molecule B becomes molecule C, molecule C becomes molecule D. Okay, and in between, for conversion of molecule A to B, you need enzyme one. Enzyme two is a second reaction it converts B to C. And you will see a few of that in here. You see at the end of this chapter, uh, you will see an example of this. And this is it's telling you that uh, when you go up the steps, you store energy up here. And then when you jump down, you're releasing the energy. That's pretty much uh, what this diagram is talking about. And the next one is the, uh, what are the laws of thermodynamic? Uh, thermodynamic is study of energy transformation. Okay, that's pretty much what thermodynamic means. The first law of thermodynamic, it says that energy uh, is constant in the universe. Energy is not created and it's not destroyed either. Okay, so if I have some candies in here, all of these candies, all of these chocolate, uh, ginger chocolate, I guess, uh, my wife bought them. I don't care for them too much. Uh, I like, uh, if you guys, uh, someday you want to get something for me, I, I prefer the mint chocolate, not ginger chocolate. But anyhow, she doesn't like it either, so they're, they're left over. All of the mint chocolate have been consumed in the house, but the mint chocolate is left over. <laughs> anyhow, so energy can be transferred from uh, and uh, transformed, but it cannot be created nor destroyed. So if I have, for example, imagine, if I have some gasoline in here, this is all gasoline. And this gasoline, the energy in this gasoline is not created 
and it's not destroyed. You say, wow, I mean, what are you talking about? I put this gasoline in my car and my car runs. Yeah, that is the second law of thermodynamics. The first law says the energy in here, the energy in here, they are not created and they are not being destroyed. So the first law also called the principle of conservation of energy. Uh, the second law, I guess, uh, you understand the first law by explaining second law. Second law says, when you take the energy of the gasoline right here, it's a gasoline, and you convert it, you put it in your car, and you convert the energy from chemical energy, from chemical energy to muscular energy, or when you drive your car, uh, you, con you converted the energy from chemical to mechanical, the car. Uh, here, the chemical here, it's converted to physical, the uh, muscular energy. So when you convert the energy from one form to another form, in between, you lose some energy. It's not 100% efficient, nothing. A conversion of the energies, the scientists are working on it, they're making machines, they're doing a lot of stuff to make it 100%, okay? So the amount of energy that goes into one thing, it comes out of another thing, is 100%. No energy is being lost in between. So that is second law of thermodynamics says that some energy, it gets lost in between, and that is, you, that is heat. And of course, when the energy are being destroyed from one form, you convert to another form, some energy in between is destroyed. That is called entropy. Entropy means disorder, okay? So it's not in this PowerPoint, let me go on. Here we go. So second I'm hearing is the term entropy. Entropy means disorder. You are you converting this energy of the gasoline into uh, driving your car. And when you drive your car, you are creating a disorder in the universe. Okay, that is the second law of thermodynamics. Um, during the energy transfer, the transformation, some energy is unusable and uh, often lost as heat. Okay. Here is the bear. You're talking about the bear. He go ahead and catch the uh, fish. And then, of course, with that energy that he's eating inside, he's able to run. I eat these candies. I'm able to talk to you guys, okay? And of course, I lose some of it as heat, okay? Especially in a hot day like today. So uh, first law of thermodynamic and second law of thermodynamic already elaborated as a car, gasoline, and now your textbook uh, copied me and put a, uh, a picture of a fish and a bear. Okay, then there is another concept which, you know, scientists uh, go over it and talk about it and they have fun, they have cocktail over it. What is exergonic and endergonic reactions in metabolism? Exergonic reaction has, you know, exit when you drive in a freeway, you see the sign exit. Exit uh, reaction uh, proceeds with a net release of free energy and it is uh, spontaneous. Okay, endergonic reaction, when you absorb energy like photosynthesis from surrounding and, uh, and, and they are not spontaneous. So an example of an exergonic reaction, it would be uh, the cellular respiration. That is, this, your textbook is setting up for, um, this chapter is setting the stage up for respiration and also um, uh, respiration and photosynthesis. So endergonic reaction is photosynthesis, okay? So an example of endergonic reaction is photosynthesis. An example of um, exergonic reaction is respiration, cellular respiration. Living uh, systems, free energy is energy that can uh, do work when temperature and pressure are uniform uh, in a living cell. And that's where mathematics comes in. Anytime you hear pressure and uniform pressure and temperature and there are other things, uh, then it goes to math. Cells are not, uh, physics, 
cells are not in equilibrium. They are, uh, they are an open system. And through experiencing a constant flow of energy, energy comes in, energy goes out, energy comes in, energy goes out. Uh, metabolism, catabolism, anabolism, catabolism, anabolism, catabolism. Okay, we we'll talked about that. A uh, defining features of life is that metabolism is never in equilibrium. That's right. It's always catabolism, anabolism, endogonic, exogonic, endogonic, exogonic. A catabolic pathway uh, in a cell releases free energy in a series of reactions, which we already talked about. A cell, okay, ATP powers cellular work by uh, coupling exogonic reactions to endogonic reactions. So a cell does three main kinds of work, chemical, transport, and mechanical. Those are the three main things that a cell does. ATP, which you already know the structure of it, you already studied it before. Um, let's, I'm not gonna elaborate on it anymore, guys. Just quickly, I'm gonna run through it and uh, we need to get to enzymes. ATP is adenosine triphosphate, is the cell's energy, whatever is in here, I eat it. When I eat it, it becomes ATP in my body. When it becomes ATP in my body, which we are going to talk about it later on, chapter um, 9, 10, 9, then I can do this. Okay? I can do this. Without this, okay, I cannot do this. Okay, so we'll talk about it. ATP is composed of ribose, it's a, a pentagon, a five uh, sugar, it's a sugar that have five sides. Uh, adenine and a nitrogenous base, adenine and three phosphate, which I already talked about that. Right here, this is your adenine, okay? And this is your ribose combination together is called adenosine. Okay, yes. okay adenosine. And then three phosphates, one, two, three. And I talked about it when one of these phosphates break, when you break strip off one of it becomes ADP. This is ADP now. It has two phosphates. Now, you, as a result of this breakage, you get some energy. Okay. Right here is ATP. Right here breaks down. It gets released some energy. What are some of the features of ATP? Here is, I'm going to let you study it. Uh, of course, you need, uh, when you want to cause this breakage, as you saw, you need water. So the process is called hydrolysis. Okay, hydrolysis, which is uh, right here, they're uh, explaining it in this right here. And then um, when ATP um, phosphorylated and other molecules, the phosphate goes attached, ATP releases one phosphate, attaches to another molecule, is phosphorylated. We already talked about this right here. ATP is practically transformed. ATP for moving the vesicles inside of a cell needed. We already talked about all of this. I hope you guys know what I'm talking about. Energy catabolism and energy and economic reaction. Uh, we already talked about that. Let's move to enzymes. So, all of that endogonic, exogonic reaction and ATP um, kind of, you have to, for example, ATP breaks down to ADP and releases a phosphate. That is exogonic reaction. When you add a phosphate to ADP to becomes ATP, that's a endogonic reaction. Okay, so let me go back. Let me write it down. When ATP becomes ADP plus PI, the I stands for inorganic phosphate. When these phosphates are attached, these phosphates are attached to this molecule that's organic. It releases energy. And, uh, uh, anyhow, you all know what I mean, energy. Okay, so when it releases energy, then this reaction is exergonic. When you add, it happens in the cell, when you add phosphate to ADP, it becomes ATP, it is endergonic reaction, okay? And then, Amir, do we need some energy to put these two together? Yeah, 
of course. You do need some energy, but the amount of energy you need to put ADP and PI together is not as much as this energy that is released right here. This energy that is released is not that much energy. It's lesser. Anyhow. So, um, uh, enzymes, what are enzymes? Enzymes are biological catalysts. You, in chemistry, you probably studied catalysts and you know what catalysts are. Catalysts are molecules in chemistry that they uh, speed up chemical reaction. Enzymes speed up chemical reactions and of course catalysts do not change at the end of chemical reaction. They do not change and that's what enzymes are. Uh, enzymes do not change. It's just like when you want to get married. You go to a priest or you go to a uh, imam or I don't know, you go to a rabbi and you get married at the end of the day when you two get married together, the imam is single and being happy or he's married and being happy. The priest is being married and being happy. The rabbi is being single and he's being happy. He doesn't change his status. He puts you together, right? When you want to get divorced, when you want to separate, you go to a judge, you go to a court. The judge, at the end of the day, he separates you, right? He signs the papers, he agrees that, you know, all of the conditions, and he separates you. But the status of the judge does not change. And that's what we, what we, what we mean by enzymes. Enzymes, they either make the chemical reaction or they break chemical reactions, but at the end, they are enzymes. And most all enzymes are protein. There is one enzyme later on at the end of semester you learn that is an RNA. Okay, uh, but enzymes until oh, when I was a student, all of the enzymes were protein. And then when they discovered this RNA act as an enzyme, then we cannot say all enzymes are protein. But during the exam, I can ask enzymes are all, but most all of enzymes are protein. But anyhow, so they are catalysts, they are catalytic reaction, hydrolysis, they do, uh, they need water, sometimes they break down. And right here, you, we talked about this, uh, sucrose can break down in the presence of the enzyme, sucrase, with help of water, of course, water is needed. Uh, the OH of the water goes to the uh, glucose, and the hydrogen of the water goes to uh, fructose, so the molecule of molecule breaks down. Here is an, a chemical reaction where uh, the amount of energy is needed right here. The amount of energy is needed to um, convert A to B or C to D and so on and so forth. And at the end, you get this, uh, this is the um, reactant. And then this is the product, okay? You all know what I'm talking about. Like for example, let me go back. This is the reactant. And these two are the product. And of course, this is the enzyme, right? So what happens when you want a product, the big uh, reactants get together or break down, whatever happens, this is the amount of energy you need. If you are taking some water and then you want to put some sugar in here, what you can do, you can dissolve it by stirring it, or you can heat it, P, uh, pay PG&E to heat up this water right here, or you can put some enzymes in there. Another option is some enzymes. It lowers the activation energy, and that's one of the characteristics of the enzymes. Enzymes low. When you add enzymes to a chemical reactions, you don't need that much energy to give to that chemical reaction to occur. So, and that's what they're showing you with Delta G. Delta G is on, uh, is, uh, uh, on a, uh, what they say in here, by uh, enzymes, I'm not sure, is unaffected, yeah, by enzymes. So, um, the reactant uh, is a substrate. What enzyme, like our a previous example, sucrose is a substrate, something that enzymes act on. And then the product is, glucose and fructose. And then at one time you will see when the enzyme and substrates come together, they act like a lock and key, and that lock and key 
is called enzyme substrate complex. The reaction catalyzed by each enzyme is very specific, and the active sites, you know, you have a huge enzyme, the active site is right here where the chemical reactions occur. This is not the active site. This is not the active site. The active site is right here. Okay, let's look at it right there. That's the active site. All of these are amino acids. Each single one of these, imagine, are amino acids. Okay, and then where the uh, sucrose columns sit down, sucrose columns sit down here. And that's active site. This is not the active site. This is not the active site. This is not the active site. So the video is showing you an enzyme. Okay, wait, it's nothing. Right here, so substrate and uh, these are the these two are substrates. Right here is the active site. These two substrates come to the active site, and then uh, a chemical reaction occurs, and at the end you have the product right here, and at the end, the enzyme goes back to its normal shape. Okay, and it goes back to its normal shape. Uh, what are effects of local conditions on uh, enzyme activity? Of course, pressure, temperature, pH, they all affect the enzyme activity. A pressure of a temperature in hot springs of Yellowstone National Park, the bacteria, and the bacteria have enzymes. The enzymes in that temperature are active, but you take that enzyme and put it in our body, they die. The enzymes denature. The only temperature that enzymes are active for the bacteria on Yellowstone National Park or any other organisms, the protista that are in the Yellowstone National Park's hot springs, that's the right temperature for them. Okay. So right here, oh, it's giving you a pH. The enzyme pepsin or trypsin in your stomach works at a uh, pH of two. You take that enzyme and you put it in your blood, it does not work, okay? The enzyme sucrase in your intestine works, in your intestine works at pH of seven. You take that enzyme and put it in your stomach, the acid of stomach denatured immediately. I hope I'm making some sense. So, it depends uh, what temperature and what pH enzyme work on. Cofactors are uh, non-protein coenzymes, usually are vitamins. Uh, so, and cofactors are, you know, can be um, uh, inorganic molecules such as metals. And organic cofactor is called coenzymes. Uh, and the coenzymes include vitamins and cofactors are usually metals. Um, and then anyhow, the examples are a lot. When you take enzymology, you stay, your textbook stayed away from it. Uh, I would like to talk about it, uh, but anyhow, let's move on. But no, the metals like calcium is good, uh, magnesium, these are manganese. These are very good example. Maybe I should talk about it. So um, cofactors like calcium, uh, magnesium, uh, manganese, these are the three I mentioned, there are three um, cofactors, um, vitamin B12, B11, uh, I'm sorry, uh, vitamin B12, uh, B2, these are, um, these are a good coenzymes. Okay. Uh, what are enzymes inhibitors and their uh, examples? Competitive inhibitors and non-competitive inhibitors, there are two types, a competitive uh, inhibitors is like this one, it comes and sit on active site, right there. It sits there when the substrate wants to come and proceed the chemical reaction, it does not happen because they see a hindrance right here. Okay, that is called competitive. When another molecule comes and sit in the active site. What if another molecule and comes and does not sit on active site, sits, on, sits in here in another place? When it sits in another place, but it, it hinders the active side, the active side, it has to be like that. It cannot be like that, okay? Then it's called non-competitive inhibitor, okay? It's just like you're driving a Bentley and they come and bring you, uh, they give you a uh, Hyundai, um, 
what was it my wife used to drive uh hyundai accent i'm not there's nothing wrong with hyundai accent it still gets you from point a to b <laughs> but but it's not same the active side is not same. it's not saying it's been to bad example i'm using bad bad example but, but um that's pretty much what it is the active side has to be the shape beside that if it's not like this then the substrate cannot fit in here Okay, allosteric regulations, it means uh, pretty much what may, may either inhibit or stimulate an enzyme activity. I'm going to go ahead. Uh, most allosterically related uh, enzymes are made from uh, polypeptide. Right here is an aloster, allosteric uh, enzymes. This is this, uh, the activator. It goes in here and it sits in here. It makes the substrate to fit. An enzyme works perfectly. Okay, so that would be a stimulator, activator. The other one, the uh, uh, the inhibitor, it goes sits here. Another molecule, it goes and sits here. And then what happens? Then the active sites change. They become inactive. So that's what allosteric. Uh, enzymes, allosteric inhibitors, or uh, say activators, mean. Uh, cooperativity, cooperativity is, is a form of allosteric regulation that amplifies enzyme activity, and then we talk about it. Feedback inhibition, uh, negative feedback somewhere along the line during semester, I talk about it like, like a thermostat in your home. Uh, when the temperature gets to uh, our home right now is outside, it's 105. My wife likes to keep it at 75. I'm freezing, but that's okay. Um, so the thermostat, when it gets to 75, you know, it kicks back and stops. And when the temperature from outside seeps in, goes up, it becomes 80, then the thermostat kicks in and brings the temperature down. That's it's called negative feedback. That's what these are, feedback inhibition means. For example, you have a three ionine. Do you remember what is three ionine? You need it for a substance. Three ionine is one of those amino acids. Very good. When that amino acid is going to become isoleucine, I think that's what this is. Yeah, it's isoleucine. So what happens with isoleucine? It has to go through a few stages. Okay, a few steps. In. Pathway one. Oh. Uh, pathway one, pathway two, pathway three, and then isoleucine goes back and sits right here in the enzyme and it changes the active site. So no more three ionine can become isoleucine until the cells uses all of its, just like a thermostat, uses all of its uh, isoleucine and then when the amount of isoleucine goes down, then this isoleucine, of course, departure, now it is ready. The enzyme becomes ready, and if there is three ionine inside of the cell, they go ahead and start it again. Okay, anyhow. Uh, localization of enzymes within the cells, uh, structures within the cells help uh, bring order uh, to metabolic pathways, some enzymes act as a position on something in the cells. Yeah. It depends where the enzyme is, uh, the enzymes for metabolic activity that you're going to learn later on, cellular respiration, mitochondria, but different mitochondria. I'm done with this chapter. I do not want to take up your time too much, um, but anyhow, study the material. Please, if you have any other uh, question, let me know. So, we can go over